So first, a few things while um, we're just kind of sitting here. I hope this only takes us 30 minutes. I'm going to try to keep us focused and kind of keep us moving along. But some of the kind of the pre-steps to know about the training as we go through this is uh, kind of unfortunately for some of the moves, you will need a little bit higher um, FPS. How you can actually check that is typing slash FPS or into the chat box and hitting enter. Or you can hit Alt F. Um, know that the Alt F, if you're like a heavy or a flying galaxy, will activate to F, which do. So those are the two ways that you can actually see it in case your video card does not put it in my case of a right-hand corner. You can do F like that. You saw me throw the ammo pack and now if you actually are below 60 frames per second, you might have some trouble with uh, one of the moves that we do. The easiest way in the game to kind of get the single biggest boost in terms of F FPS is to go into settings and I think it's graphics and then turn off shadows. Um, shadows Your push to talk is no longer active. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I must have cut out there. How, how much did Something you hear? about shadows? Yeah, so shadows are the single biggest FPS hit. For me, I lose 20 FPS when I turn it on, roughly. Uh, about a third. So if you wanted to turn off shadows in settings and then graphics, at least for this training, you'd be able to move and jump a little bit better for some of the moves. So that's how you can actually check your FPS. For, in terms of loadouts, um, like I said before, we do not want any light assaults because that would be cheating for this. Uh, I'm going to get you around to some of the hard to get to places without having a jetpack tonight. Um, I would also ask that you take off anything like um, safe fall that prevents your death from high altitudes, as well as things like cat-like and athlete that allow you to move a little bit quicker. So take those off of any of your loadouts, at least temporarily, just for this training. So that way you can see the effect of what we'll be going through. All right. You guys can still hear me on this um, keybind, right? Loud and clear. Okay. All right. Let's drop, drop, drop. Let's go out to the center of the warp gate here. So, Hydra, we will be making use of that galaxy, but we won't need it quite yet. That's a 20 minute timer, right? Yep. Plenty. We should have plenty of time. That's almost the full training. So in planet side, if you guys just want to kind of group up on one side of the, the platform here, um, I guess we are looking, what is this, to the north here if we're on the south end. If you guys start walking out to the north, basically this is your 100% movement speed um, in planet side too. Without ha holding shift or anything, just walking across at a normal guns up pace like this is for reference 100% of your walk speed. If you were to instance strafe left or right or backwards, you would go at 75% of that um, original speed. So you still go quite a bit, um, you still go pretty fast, but not quite as fast as just walking forwards. If you were to go ahead and just run back and forth, you basically go at 162.5. So basically think of it as like what's 13 eighths or something like that. So about a, a time and a half roughly is what your, your movement speed is here. Um, the big thing to know is a lot of people don't know this. If you are running and then you let off shift, there's about a 0.3 per um, second delay in terms of getting that first bullet off. Whenever you, you think you're going to be seeing somebody around a corner or, you know, you think you have some chance of getting into contact contact with somebody, it's always best to let off shift a little bit early. You can always press it again to basically keep up with the squad. But anytime you think that you're about to run into somebody, just let off shift. That way you guys will be able to shoot right away if you see them or even pre-fire. That's also a useful. So one of the uh, other things to know about most guns in Planet Side 2, and I say most, the NS guns are a little bit different, but most guns in Planet Side 2, if you're walking forward and then hold right click to to aim down sights, you're going to move at 50% of the speed. So if you were moving at, say, 50% and then you start strafing to the side, it's that 50% and then 75% on top of that. So it's 75% of 55 or 50%. So that's, in the math of my head, that's 37.5% if I'm correct. Um, so just know that all of these movement, I guess, impairing effects kind of compound or multiply together to get you, your final end result. So you can actually be going pretty slow if, for instance, you're crouched aim down sight and strafing to the side. You're pretty much sitting still. If you uh, take a look at me right now, that's what I'm doing and I'm inching along at this point. One of the things that you guys... Hold on, we uh, came up with a platoon here. On platoon, Babo, are you able to hear me? I hear you now. All right. 
So everyone go ahead and turn your platoon comms up if they're down. I'll try to press the new key bind and we'll continue on pl the platoon comms. All right. So one of the things that you guys have probably seen me do is I'll be running along and then all of a sudden I've got ammo for you I do that here. little weird jump thing that I do. Um, what I'm doing when I'm doing that is trying to maintain my forward momentum and still do an animation that slows me down to a walk speed. In that case, it was throwing ammo pack. Um, if you are if you wanted to do this with, I think you could even do it with infill darts that you're shooting, you might be able to do it with a beacon or an infill uh, motion spotter deploy um, as well. But if you, Grenade basically, out! you don't have to slow down to a walk to throw an ammo pack. If you're an engineer, you can always just press F while you're sprinting. And then so what you do is you sprint, you jump and then immediately press F after, and Ammunition you don't fight as here. much um, speed. The reason that's important is it does compound out after, or after a squad's been in the field for a couple minutes. Um, you will notice yourself lagging behind, constantly slowing down. To Got extra ammunition here. Setting any deployables or anything like that. Any Six questions so far in the sections that we've gone over? I have one. Go ahead on uh, platoon if you can. Uh, so I, I may have missed it, but how, if you're moving both forward and and or backward and also strafing, how does that affect your movement? How does that compound, if anything? Is it worse penalty or? So if you're so moving forward is 100% as we went over without shift, just normal walking 100% for reference. If you're strafing or moving backwards, that's 75%. I believe if you're doing strafing and backwards, it's still 75% um, that you're moving. And if you're starving and going forward, it's also 75%? That makes sense. That might be 100%, but I'm not certain. I haven't done the math on that. But it, it feels slower than just walking forward to me. Okay, fair enough. The big t takeaway from that is don't be running around corners while you're holding shift. That way um, you, you don't have that 0 0.3 second delay before you can actually shoot. All right, we're going to jump to a section and... Kind of a little bit ahead, but we'll go back to the, one of the earlier sections. For now, let's have everyone in the platoon follow the PL out to the southwest. So as we get down over into the ditch here, I'm going to have all of you just start spamming your jump buttons right about now. Just start spamming them. What you're going to notice, as you can kind of see me in the front, I basically have no forward momentum at this point. I'm spamming it, and I'm really not able to walk much further. What this kind of demonstrates to you, as you go ahead and let off now and let it just watch it go ahead and kind of decay, basically. Um, the reason a lot of people can't make jumps in Planet Side 2 is that I think they get frustrated and they just start spamming the button and they don't stop. Um, what they may not notice is that they're actually losing that ability to walk forward or make that jump to the next ledge by spamming. Um, I don't know what the technical term for it is in game, but basically there's a, um, a decay uh, that happens if you do not jump for a while. So one of the things that a lot of people will do when they're trying to scale this tower, like I'll be directing you guys on how to do right now, is if I'm spamming, I can't get up right here, and I just want to like make a jump over to the middle here. Well, that time I made it. But if I jump more, I would not be able to make that jump right over to the middle there. That happens because of this movement impairing effect that nobody really tells you about in Planet Side. So, if we're going to climb one of these towers, I always recommend to basically start with the, the white painted bits on the sides and walk up those. That's how you can easily get up. If you are trying to uh, walk up on some of the, the gray or silver um, colored things, that's going to be much harder Grenade for you. Out! When you're in the corner like I am right now, and most people are, if you just fine, do a, a two or three with... count, no, let's not concuss ourselves. That's going to cause right. us some movement impairing effects here. Um, just let it recharge. You can hold down shift and then walk forward and jump. You should be able to make it onto the kind of the supporting bar that we're staying on right now. From here, you can just look in. And this is where I was talking about FPS. If you don't have 60 FPS, this can be a bit difficult to jump up. So one of the here. tricks for this is while you're on the support bar, if you look down, you'll get a, more FPS since there's less things on your screen. That's not Planet Side 2 specific, that's just GPUs in general. Less things to render equals more FPS. This is one of the moves that I don't do often in squads because it is difficult for people and it does kind of depend on their hardware. Um, it's not That kind of defeats the point of playing um, kind of as a team. I want to be able to tell you guys to do something that everyone can do. Uh, this is one of the moves that you can do kind of more so on solo play and it just kind of 
teaches you about how to actually manage your jump spam and not actually um, spam it. So just have some patience there and you should be able to walk up just fine. Yeah, some people call it billy goading when you're climbing things like that that seem impossible to climb. But if you're ever in, like, in a, for instance, these towers, the small towers are really common around amps. If you have a sunder on the outside and you want to get in, blow up an enemy sunder, it will be really easy to um, jump up the side here and walk right in on second floor instead of fighting your way up the ramp. Uh, I got 130 frames and I can't get this jump. <laughs> So it looks like your head might be under it right now. You might want to come out just a little bit right there. Yeah. So you want to aim not for the, the part sticking out, but for the floorboard right there. And you'll probably have to do like a double jump to once your toes are up on the, the floor, you want to hit jump. I will tell you this does take a while to actually get down, um, but it is a handy move to actually be able to get up into these towers. So I'll give you guys another uh, minute or so here to practice. Are there any questions so far about this? Can we disable nighttime? No, no, we can't actually change the, the time of day. <laughs> I don't think that impacts FPS too much. No, but I can't see where I'm going. So one of the kind of the biggest takeaway from this is if you're having trouble getting somewhere, um, it's basically probably you, that you've been spamming jump. So just take a breath, like physically take a breath, just let it recharge, try not to get too frustrated at it and realize that there is kind of a, a movement speed penalty for spamming jump. Uh -huh. you, should, you should have access to <laughs> a, a beacon now if you want to go back over to the, the terminal and hit the terminal so you can actually get the beacon and then go towards the center of the platoon waypoint. Copy. What are you guys doing? I forgot I have one. You guys can stay there. You don't need to be anywhere else right now. Um, Baba, we're going to set a beacon somewhere else. Put a new platoon. So Jamon, uh, thanks for joining us. We're just doing movement speed training or movement training here, um, and we've been going over some of the things like the movement speeds and the impairments that you can uh, have. We're going to be using platoon comms since we are super squatting right now. Sounds good. All right, for this next move, everyone except Babo and myself, go ahead and redeploy. We're going to teach you guys about beacon steering and what that is. So one of the things that some people don't know um, in Planet Side 2 is you can actually steer your beacons. So Babel, if you want to set your beacon next to mine, this is probably far enough away to make it a challenge, but not impossible, but we'll see about that. Um, so what we're going to do is I'll have everyone on the dead um, map screen and we're going to, Babo and myself now can safely redeploy. So we're going to be, um, yeah, I'm going to go over that, the, the facing south as well. So for some reason, in Planet Side 2, every time that you take a beacon, you're always facing south. You can count on it, it's just a 100% chance thing. So, if you take a look at the platoon waypoint area and where the beacons are right now. Beacons are on the south of the building that we want to get onto, which is waypoint. So, in order to get onto this platoon waypoint, I'm going to say we have to hold D, or no, sorry, um, S to go backwards, and then D to go a little bit to the right if you're facing south. So it's up and left, so we need to hold back and right in order to actually get on there. So on the count of 10, or actually on the count of 3, we're going to have everyone take the beacon and then steer with S and D. How you can actually know where you're going to land is don't look so much at the center of the screen, but use your mini-map to know if you're over the building or not. That's the best way because things can happen very quickly on the, the actual interface on the game, so you need to be looking at the mini-map on your bottom left-hand side of the screen to actually see if you're going to... So let's take the beacon in 3, 2, 1. Wow. Yep, so most of us made it here. Some of you might have had a bad beacon. That's a possibility. If you are down on the ground over there, I would say you might have landed on one of the, the sloped edges here and got slung off. But if... Um, I don't, 
Uh, I don't think we've actually explained this very often in game, but if we have a beacon next to a building, um, it's not just chance that you guys can land on the roof, it's almost a, a guarantee that you guys can steer your beacons. Um, always know that, like I said, whenever you drop out of a, a beacon specifically, you are always facing south, so you can kind of hold that button before your, your loading screen even finishes and be able to get onto the building. If you guys want to redeploy again and um, try it again, by all means, go ahead and do so. You guys can get some more practice with that over the next minute or so. It seems to me that you get the most control right when you spawn in, is that correct? I would say that's probably true since you're moving um, the slowest at that point and obviously the sooner you start correcting, um, the more it's going to impact you because on your next drop, take just start your movement and take a look at which way you end up going. You're going to continue on the path that you started. It's like a thruster if you that way. If you're going too far, you have to counteract that and give it the opposite input. Exactly. That I went from like the corner of the building uh, by pressing after to pre-pressing, and I landed about the center of the building. Yeah, so you can go. Uh, let me set a waypoint. Oh, well, the waypoints are on the the ceiling of the the warp gate shield, so I can't measure distance here too well. But I would say we're probably about 50 meters from the beacons, and that's a pretty good distance to actually steer. All right, let's get out into the field. Um, let's go back towards the actual southeast warp gate. Once you land, go ahead and find the platoon lead. So, listen carefully, trust in the orders. We're going to be going inside. Let's go up the up elevator. We're going to ride this all the way to the top. What we're going to do now is go out to the west and jump right off onto platoon waypoint. Just jump right off. Have no fear. What you just saw was basically the fall of damage immunity that you get from a couple of sources in planet side. Um, if you took the elevator as you were supposed to, you should have that fall damage immunity. You certainly wrote it for long enough that for the next five or so seconds after you get out of that elevator, you have fall damage immunity. If you lingered at all up top and given the height of this, you might have died at the bottom. So that's just something to be, to be aware of. Your fall damage immunity starts to um, decay basically as soon as you get off of that elevator. You also get them from jump pads, which we'll uh, go over in a little bit. But um, sometimes I might have asked you guys to do something that sounded kind of crazy, like jump off of the tower. Um, some people in the past rightly hesitated if they didn't understand what I was asking of them. But that's basically the fall damage immunity that you get um, in in Squad Chat, yes, uh, it's the same damage immunity that you get from a Valkyr Galaxy as well, as long as you don't touch the sides of those vehicles on the way out. And beacons too, right? Uh, beacons, yes. If your beacon like hits um, a galaxy and you lose the drop pod, then you do start to take fall damage from that point, yes. Well, the difference between the fall damages is the elevator and jump pad have a duration of fall damage. Out of a Valk in a galaxy, it's one and done. You. If you touch anything, it's removed. So that's why some of the galaxy pilots have to be just a little bit careful about the angle at which they drop. Um, that if you're not perfectly level, then some of your squad members may touch the sides and lose their fall damage immunity on the way down. I thought it actually lasted a few seconds after first contact. So like if you hit the gal, obviously, then you're going to do the whole drop, and you're going to run out. But I thought I thought I've hit like a building. And deflect it off and then hit, still be going really fast. And still no damage. As or long like, as you're close enough to the ground, it might not even take shield damage, but if I can tell you if you're 800 meters up and you hit the galaxy, the side of the galaxy, you will have a bad time when you hit the ground. <laughs> yep, keep, keep the wings level for a galaxy drop. Uh, there's some, I won't go too much into the galaxy details, that's a whole other training in and of itself. 
But so that's all I wanted to show you about that. We can, uh, I'll be the guinea pig here. You got, let's give a medic down there for me. I'm going to run to the teleporter. This is something that I don't know that we're going to find out together is whether, whether or not teleporters give you fall damage immunity. So let's figure that out. With lifts, I believe you also go faster up them if you're holding space. So the teleporters do not give you the fall damage. Only the elevators and the jump pads do. And so, yeah, if, let's go. Actually, have everyone go into the up elevator here. So what was called out was Indoors, if you go, go up control. faster, if you Great hold work. space, the thing to know about that is you have to be looking exactly level. It kind of affects your forward or side to side movement if you're when you're holding space, like if you lean back and hold space, you're going to push yourself back out of the, the teleporter or the elevator. Shifting or uh, crouching also affects your elevation and speed. And crouch can also stop you from going up. Yep, so basically, um, I, we don't have a section on it, but we'll, we'll do it off the cuff um, for the how to move yourself in the air. We had a really cool use of it um, back on Endar that I'll try to find another place for us to experiment with on Hassan. Let's get everyone to the top. We're going to go into the next bit of training here. So our, our uh, tech plant, we have turrets here. I'll make this easy and show you what most people do in terms of getting up on the roof. If you need to get a beacon up there or get to a beacon up there is they use the these turrets. If it's our base, they go around the back, hop up on the sides and then just walk right up um, once they've aimed the guns up. That's the easy way, but that's that's not the fun way. A fun and extremely risky way is if you're looking at where the platoon lead is now at the actual air terminals. You don't need anything up here. You don't need to have any guns active. Um, you can actually just use some of the, the movement stuff that we've learned earlier and not spamming. So where I'm standing, this side or, or the other side, we're going to get to that awning right there. You make that one good jump, you can always get up to the roof no matter what. Go, go ahead and try that. Just know um, if you, we have any NSO here, please don't push it each other off since we do collide with them and just watch your jump here. My tip for you is to not try not to jump directly at it. You want to jump a little bit low and kind of land on the low bit of or the small bit of the awning that should be easier to make that jump. Use the turrets. That's the only way I knew how to do it. Works for tank guns too if you're yeah. in a similar ground area. That actually raises a point about using tanks to get onto roofs on offense, but that's a wider issue. <laughs> yep. So in squad we were talking about using other things like tank uh, cannons to be basically the ladders to get up to things. Take some ammunition. So go ahead and take another minute or so here. Pilots, if you guys would like to find your aircraft and bring them up to the gun deck, that would be great. Actually, pilots, if you guys want to grab your aircraft, sorry, there's one more. Uh, I'm just going to roll this in since we're already at a tech plant. Let's take the teleporter downstairs. Instead of coming back later and the, the kind of the miscellaneous things, um, we're going to go over how to get inside if you do not want to go in through the main doubles entrance, in this case on the west. In this case, we own the shield here on the, the vehicle shield on the north and south. Uh, what you can do is if you're, say, say you're outside, and I, I don't think I would ever ask a squad to do this, but on solo play, this is probably helpful for you to know, is if you jump up and then stand right where I am right now, you take a running jump off this little elevated, I guess it looks like a hinge almost, and make a run to the support structure towards the gate. If you climb up here, get to the center, let your kind of jump uh, spam decay for a few seconds and then make another jump, you can get on top of the shield and over into the actual eight point. So go ahead and give that a, a shot for a couple minutes and see how you guys do. Yeah, I've seen people do this. Yep, it's a widely known thing, but uh, I think some people just don't know the path that you need to take as well as about the jump um, spam delay. One of the things that I've kind of taken for granted that some people may not know as well is once you jump, continue holding the buttons of, I guess, forward and the jump key. Um, that does, like we saw earlier in the elevator, holding those buttons while you're moving in the air does impact how you move. So continue to hold those and that might make it a little bit easier. Keep 
getting bumped off by a wire. Great success. Pilots, if you guys want to start bringing your aircraft down, we're going to head out to the next base in just a minute. Don't do it. I was going to grab your aircraft. Thank you. Had it. For the duration of the stream, I'll need to use questions. Yes, I want to use the tune for everything. That way, I'll probably use it again. Let's see what I did. So, pilots, we're going to be flying first alpha, waypoint, then platoon. I want to avoid taking active flight guidance. We're going to try to do a quick training on what I see as only target is awesome, but just turning active at 2.1. So, let's fly out first alpha, waypoint, then platoon. This is the important one, so I was trying to do that. Let's go ahead and see all the sun drawing attention. Let's go ahead and get the train down here and head back up to the train in easy territory. Excuse me, excuse me. Tower, tower, tower. There we go. Sorry, I didn't know if you wanted to know if I had a problem. Yeah, no problem. Okay, okay. Let's just try to find kill. We're going to have to pick up that and make this run together quickly. Since this is not an NC owned tower, we are going to take a few bits of shield damage as we do this next move. So platoon is on the, what I would call the third floor. Take some ammunition. Take the pad down, guys. Yeah, so look for that play PL star. I'm on the third floor with some of the elevators. So we can walk inside this yellow shield, but it's a, we'll have to get out within 10, ten seconds or we die. What we're going to do is we're all going to rush in, assume it's the NZ owned, and go up to the, the fourth level above this. Once we're up there, we're going to go up the up elevator and then immediately follow the PL off the side of this tower, and we're going to test that out again. This is, I think, the one of the towers that we tried this on before and people had some questions about and just didn't quite have faith in PL, which is or SL at the time, which is understandable. Um, so let's go in in three, two, one. This area is restricted. On the up elevator on the left. Find the nearest door and just run out right over the edge. Jump off and you can basically get right off the tower, still keeping the fall damage immunity. It's okay if you hit things on the way down, you're not going to lose your damage immunity. Let's go weapons green on the northwest mozzie. Can I have a beacon? Ah! Alright, so those are the fall things you can do for the community that you can quickly get out of the tower that last one is useful for instance, if you're really siege into the tower. I mean, you can really run away out, you can easily go out and jump right off and come up on the stairs right now and be right behind the enemy. Oh, he's on me, he's on me. So the question was, uh, do you get the fall damage immunity with both as well as the blue, the gold, it doesn't matter which one you get, get it with both. So, put it up, that's all the things you do here, and we're gonna fly out. He's back, he's pissed. He's just out of the shot. I'm gonna go to the other three, I'm gonna go to the other three. He's just out of the shot. He's just out of the shot. He's just out of the shot. So one of the things that we tend to do is I think a lot of people just ride the jump pad and just take it where it takes you. Um, you probably notice that on the far side where you land, there's a little bit of extra pad, and that's where you're supposed to land. So that's what we have to land. Um, one of the areas where it's really useful is jamming away when you're running flying to the southern triple stack. You can actually see yourself. So what we're going to do here is go to a jump pad that should be active, and we're going to jump from the southern jump pad out to the east to at least east town source to go. That's the way. So now let's just get around the eastern pad. We're going to get you from the south southeast. We're going to get you from the south southeast. We're going to get you from the south southeast. All right, Lib's almost down. Let's get people grouped up on the southern jump pad. So what I'm going to have you guys do this time, um, so the northern one takes you to a different base, and we need to go on the southern one. That takes us on a long jump out to the east. What we're going to do is we're going to hold space and forward as we go, and I think that we're going to basically overshoot the landing pad and get further into the base. Let's take the jump pad in three, two, one. Yep, I think most of us overshot the pad that way. If we want to do it the opposite way when we go back, we can actually hold control and we should land Got below the biolab, but we'll use the elevator to get back up. For me, control had no effect. Were you supposed to spec back as well as control? 
I was, I think, out of habit, so go ahead and try that again and see if that has an effect. That is the change, yep. I also held back and I landed right next to PL, so I think it does work. I would say control and back or even turn around and walk forwards and look down, that would be the best way to control basically against the way that you're actually flying through the air. Ammunition yeah, here. control didn't do anything for me the first jump. Uh, holding back did. All right, your, good to know. your attitude, your attitude, like the facing, also affects it, like it does in the elevator. Might be a key bind issue. I know control doesn't do anything for me. I use shift for uh, moving down. So what is control so, supposed to be? So control is supposed to be the, your crouch and move down key. If that's not what it is, then whatever that key is for you, that's what I, I mean. I think crouch toggle doesn't work. It has to be the hold crouch, I think. That's you correct, also I think. over... So you overshoot if you hold left or right as well. It's weird. Can we get a beacon on one of the pads? Beacon. I suppose I also could have just stopped in the gal. Alright, once you guys have jumped back to the biolab or your aircraft, wherever that may be right now, go ahead and load in. We're going to go to places and then that'll be it for training. One of the really useful things, especially, um, I guess not today, but when we didn't have quick uh, access to an air terminal, was knowing how to get to an air terminal quickly in all bases. This is one of the things that on the Platoon Waypoint building, I think a lot of people just don't ever go up here, so there's no reason for them to know. Basically, on the, in the I'm an engineer, left and right, or in this case, you. east and west sides of the Platoon Waypoint building, it's an SU on this one, but normally it's spawn, um, there are a, ju a jump pad on each side, so go ahead and take that jump pad. It is one way, unlike the other jump pads that we've seen tonight, but it takes you right to the air terminal on this base. This can be really useful if you need to go re-kit as a max or something, and then link up with the squad that just pulled a galaxy. Instead of running out on the ground, getting run over by a tank, getting a revive, and going up and finding the elevator inside, just use the jump pad to get right over all of that mess. My mind is now blown. Like I said, this is one of the things that I think a lot of people just don't see. And... Some, I guess let's go ahead and just do a lap, do a lap around the amp station on on this level, so that way you, you guys can see the other um, things, the other ways into the A point here. This shouldn't take us more than a minute, so we'll go ahead and tack this on now. We only have one more thing left to cover. So the two sides are basically a mirror image. Um, there's going to be a stair on both the east and west side if you go down that. You're going to go to another set of elevators. You can go down to the bottom safely here. As long as the shields are up, the enemy inside will not be able to shoot out. This is a really good way for us to, for instance, have medics on the, the shielded side where everyone is. Heavies will poke out, shoot, and then come back in when they need health or to get a revive, anything like that. Um, we can basically use the shield to our advantage as long as the enemies have not taken it down and have a lot of control over a point and push out. If not push out, at least apply a lot of pressure to it. Things like maxes, um, I believe their shields, if you're like an NSO max, would go through this as well for another layer I'll of shields. One of the other really useful things to know for the getting to the air terminals, hey, uh, careful here, light fire, like I said before, um, is on the amp station to get up to the air terminal, in this case to our south, if you guys follow me, you're always going to have terminals... Uh, near those air pads, it's just a question of which floor they're on. If they're not on the first floor, then they're on the second floor. If they're not on the um, first floor, there's a chance there's a generator there. In this case, um, just a little tidbit of information, that horizontal gen below us, uh, um, below the elevators, is actually to get into the SCU. You set that off, and then the, sh the shields in the SCU go down, and then you get the SCU. So, just a little bit of extra knowledge there. Alright, let's get loaded in, and I'll find us one more train. Let's 
Just quite the interview, strange just now. I did not know. Uh, almost a stranger in the living, I'll hurt you, so if you're talking, please double check your ID on Oof, another person was full, and then you can't read what I can look. That's probably true, actually. It's a black text, we'll get it for you. Guilty, strange, let's change. Welcome, strange, let's. So, we're just in the last bit of the train here, looks like the two-month will be suitable for our needs here. I can repair that. I've got ammo for you here. Being set for alpha if anybody needs it. So, one of the things that I often will tell squads to do to get off of really steep things is to rappel down. Usually, it's if we're trying to run away from something and we don't want to redeploy. If you guys want to walk over to the ledge with me, um, this is, it's fairly steep, I would say. I wouldn't jump off of this and expect to live. But what you can do is, what I call repelling, it just comes from the look of um, people when they're actually repelling off of a rock face. If you tr try to walk down this and hold backwards um, S and just try to slow yourself down, uh, out of my experience, that's not going to work for you. So the best thing that you can do is actually, if you want to watch me, I'll kind of just go side to side right now, start working my way down, and then walk into the mountain. Um, if you find yourself stuck, just go side to side and always keep an eye on the mountain. You should go down slowly without actually doing that skidding motion where you take a lot of shield damage and fall damage. You should go down at a more controlled pace. That hill, frankly, was not that steep. As long as it's not sheer vertical, you should be okay. Um, but see, I think all of us got down. It took a little bit longer, obviously, but we have all of our shields, and there's no risk of having to need a medic with safe fall to revive everyone at the bottom. Let's get loaded up, up into the galaxy, and we'll try that one more time. Yeah, it would work just as well to have a medic throw a res grenade right before everybody splatted, right? Not just as well. <laughs> you could revive everyone preemptively, but it would just waste a grenade when we have the ability to actually walk it. Actually, just walk into the mountain and slow down. It's a huge thing that I think a lot of people just don't even realize you can do is turn around and walk into it. For some reason, I can't explain why, maybe it's the 100% versus 75% when you're walking backwards. It's enough to slow you down. I just want to say this this tactic has saved my personal life and the lives of my entire squad. Sometimes when we have to retreat out of hot battles, and we can just go down a cliff, and the other team is looking at us like they lived through that fall, huh? It's pretty handy. I don't know if this was something I learned or something I uh, read about, but it's definitely very useful. The reason I wanted to do uh, training on Hawson um, in particular was because of this uh, the really boost that we have here. But safe fall is invaluable. Yes, safe fall is useful, but uh, everyone should have that off, at least for this training, so that way we're not crouching on it. We can actually learn some of the mechanics, and then we can have the nice to have, like safe, safe fall. So let's go back to somewhere before on the roof of our house at the working point. Oh, fine. Has anybody had any questions they want to ask? All right, so what we're going to try here is we're going to land on the platoon waypoint side, kind of that third where the fat stairs are. And then we're going to practice doing a jump between the two uh, opposing sides of the roof here. It's something that can be really useful if, for instance, you do not want to expose yourself off, in this case, to the people in the west. And you have cover by having the, the little defilades there at, um, I guess, the, the center section where the top of fats and skinny are. You get down on the edges where PL is right now. You can actually jump between the two sides without ever actually going up top. You can still have your head fully covered out to the west and make jumps as long as you don't have that jump um, movement speed penalty that I was talking about earlier, you can freely jump between the two sides of the powerhouse here. It seems like, it seems like you can actually walk down the uh the downward way and you have to jump to get the, up, the other up where, upward way there appears to be a little bit of a I don't know if this is every powerhouse but this one in particular does have a bit of a flat surface that you can walk on here I would not count on that for everyone so I would just be comfortable doing the jump anybody got a rope Stinking. In the 25th century, we don't bring rope. Yeah, well, we can't scale walls either. Titanfall 2 type wall running and grapples would be amazing. Let's be honest. I will beacon myself there. So 
Uh, one last call for any questions before we wrap up the training portion of tonight.